Aaron. Hello, hello. How are things? Things are pretty good. Kind of just rounding out this quarter best I can. Is this the end of the quarter? No. This is the beginning of the end of the quarter. No. But yes, I'm coming coming back down to Earth. Day. Where were you? Um, I was off uh, <laughs> in, in the imagined in the imagined space of, of an uncolonized San Francisco. <laughs> okay. I, we did that event last weekend um, with the, the skating on native land thing. All right. And that went really well. Um, a lot of skaters out that I don't know, which is cool. And it's like word got around and all the native folks want to do it again. So call it a win. It's a good sign. Yeah. So now just kind of like settling into not writing grants for a second, not organizing events for a second. Um, right. You know, not trying to pitch new projects for a second and just sort of figure out what I need to do. So it's a good time. Good time to kind of just level set, I think. Cool. Going into about, spring. Yeah, exactly. You know, maybe some maybe some some light lifts that I've been putting off that I could probably just serve to clear off the plate, you know. Yeah. yeah. How about you? Are you traveling soon? Uh, I'm actually literally standing at a gate in Detroit um, to get on a flight to come back. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's, Was it uh, everything you dreamed of? Yeah. It's, 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 uh, things are really starting. I mean, I guess they have been just because I showed up. <laughs> you know, it's just happening. But from, from the last time I was here, it was maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe, three or four years ago, maybe four years ago. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's, it feels like there's definitely a lot more going on. I mean, I think the big thing, I mean, I wouldn't spend a lot of time 
in like touring around Detroit, but um, I did go to Michigan Central, which was the uh, you know that that epic train station that was just everyone's favorite ruin porn. Oh sure. Photo- photograph spot, and it's like oh damn, there are new windows then, and it's like there's a uh, leveled and polished concrete floors every everywhere, and there are robots inside, and it's converted into this epic kind of innovation center. Um, and uh, this Ford wrote a, a big check slash tax deductible um, of a billion dollars to support innovation, whatever the fuck that means. Um, but I, uh, I, I had dinner with the CEO of that whole operation, who used to be the COO, COO of um, Sidewalk, Sidewalk Labs. Oh, wow. So, debacle in Toronto. Dre's best friend, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Super power. Um, yeah. So uh, he seems he seems like you know he's he's like earnest. He wants to get this, you know, he asks a lot of questions and we're with um two of my friends here who are are facilitating the artists and residence program uh, as part of this Michigan Central thing. And um so yeah, you know, it's fascinating just to kind of hear and ask questions and see what's going on. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of like on a, I'm doing like the wishy-washy hand thing, like we'll see. Um, but it, it, it at least seemed like he was kind of earnest about doing it. And I like that, you know, making this into a real thing. And the story is from my friend, John and Suzanne, that this is, you know, he, he sort of coming out this like, this is like my, um, not literally, but like, you know, he's a, he's a senior career guy. So he's like, okay, this is this is my chance. Like, actually do something, you know, meaningful that that kind of you know whatever leaves a legacy or whatever. I don't know. We'll see. And is your are you there as sort of like a project guide in some way to help imagine all it can be? Who me? Yeah. Uh, I was. I, I mean, I, I came here to do a talk at University of Michigan and uh, and uh, another school here in Detroit um, near Cranbrook. And John and Cezanne are just like old friends. And, uh, you know, so they want to pull the future laboratory in, into this stuff. So, you know, it's at that level, basically, you know, meet the CEO and um, let's go from that. Nice. Sounds fun. Yeah, let's see what happens. Did you, um, uh, did you bring a magazine with you? Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, John and Cezanne of the magazine, they're going to, uh, they left it. They was late, they left it in the car, but they're like, well, you know, they'll drop off on his desk. Mm-hmm. We talked about the whole magazine in the future deal. Um, everyone gets it. I mean, it's, it's that's great. It. Yeah. Hey, can I can I make one of you guys host? Yeah, throw it over to me. Up. All right. Stay the bray has now made the host. Cool. I. Um... Yeah. I posted uh, I posted a couple of things from the magazine on the uh, on the Design Fiction Daily because um, I needed to find quick ways to 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 post content with my uh, crazy week, and um, so I did a shout out to the magazine because Patrick did that good post on LinkedIn. Yeah, and uh, I've gotten like half a dozen requests, people asking me to buy the magazine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean that, that's been lurking in the back of my head because i've got like <laughs> like a, you a got a couple of, you know yeah. what we we should have a think about that because um uh because there's been a few requests on linkedin and i've gotten a few requests and i think it's i think it's it's worth considering i um i ordered a magazine from i ordered a magazine from uh ginkgo bioworks do you know this this uh company no so they they po- i saw some random post and and they created some not a magazine from the future but i think the theme of this magazine that they frequently publish or regularly publish uh was the future and i think they may have gone in that world anyways i ordered it a couple of weeks ago and it should arrive here on monday but um, 
you know, it was uh, you know, it was a fifteen dollar magazine plus fifteen dollars of shipping. Didn't realize yeah. it cost so much money to ship a magazine, but um, uh, but yeah, there's obviously a, a demand. People still want that paper product in their hand. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so uh, we should we should all we should have a magazine in the future. Um, Powwow, and um, yeah, Patrick and I were working on the site a bit, and we, you know, the, the whole the whole media plan. So, and yeah. and then also of course the, um, uh, you know, when you're up for it and and, and uh, do the uh, the podcast for the Design Fiction Daily. There's, there's one thing that I wanted to just mention. Um, that is a uh, sort of more general topic and it kind of came to my mind when i was thinking about all the whole the hyper collab vibe if you will um so i think it's a bigger conversation but i'll mention it to you guys here is that god there's got to be a way i, I feel like we, we, we've got such an amazing community and we're all kind of each other in our own particular ways right so we're here because we're, you know, we're feeling something. We're not here because someone's paying us to be here. And it, I, I'm looking for the way that we can have more really um, like zealous mutual support. And by that, I mean, in very practical terms, when a Dre kind of character starts a you know, platform called Design Fiction Daily, we should, every single one of us, be posting about it and linking to it and liking it and shouting it out in our networks because we're all, I mean, it, we're not, you know, we're, we're, the, we're the opposite of pump and dump, right? We're here for something that's bigger and better than all of us. And so I'm trying to find a way to kind of navigate us in that territory. My, my sense is that people would, that, that, that it makes absolutely, not only good, good sense, it's like what we do as a community. And uh, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that just kind of builds what we're each and all doing. Which is, which is in, in some way, whether or not we're working on each other's projects, we are working on each other's projects. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You see, you guys see what I'm saying? No, that's a great, that's a great point. You know what? I, the idea that came to mind is like, we've got the shill and share channel, which people can share, you know, things that they're up to. They might not want to go bananas in terms of, um, of shouting it out. Uh, but maybe there's a thread called like shill and shout and, and that's explicitly anything posted in there is like, I would like as much support as possible to spread this word. And, um, uh, you know, anyone with the, you know, a, a, a newsletter blog article, because even just that one quick mention in your email, Julian has been great. Like I just more than doubled my subscribers from a, a single thing. And now it's, I'm starting to pick up a little bit more momentum. And, uh, and it's been really, really great. So I think that uh, uh, doing that, because you're going to have that work kit that's going to come out soon. It'd be great to just uh, mobilize the masses to uh, spread that word, put it on our various Twitters and LinkedIn's and so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, we should formalize that, maybe create a channel or create a thread and just talk about why we want to do this and how we can embody this, uh, uh, what did you call it? Like zealous collaboration or zealous sharing or something? yeah yeah that, that kind of thing and i think i think the yeah the channel and stuff and i think I, and part of me is also wondering like what does it take to get people to do that because I, I feel like there's, there's either a reluctance or people just don't feel into it enough to even be bothered it's like i got that or something because um yeah i'm i'm not saying that it's i'm not trying to trying to doubt the ability of people to do it i'm just wondering why it seems difficult and my uh, like, yeah, go on. Well, my 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 generation, or at least my cohort of downhill skateboarders, loves a reshare on Instagram. That's like we don't really have like a centralized magazine or anything um, anymore. We just kind of all reshare posts and videos and things, just kind of make their way around. Um, I don't know how active on any on Instagram any of y'all are, but that's that's always been sort of like the at least for the past twelve years. That's been that's been the mode for people. Yeah, it's it's a it's a weird it's a weird thing, and maybe it is generational or something. But but um, I like the I, I'm not I'm not saying it's to like to speak badly about the uh, 
you know, the, the uh, older near future laboratory guys like Nicholas and Fabian and I, mean, I guess Nick ran off, but see, but it was, it's like impossible to get them to reach care stuff. And it's not like they're reluctant to, it's just, they, they don't like, they'll see the stuff. I know they see the stuff, but then they won't reshare it. And I, I find it like, um, not upsetting so much as bewildering. It's like, I'm sharing the work that we're doing. I don't care what you, what's going on here. And I, I found the same thing, like, even like with um, my, uh, my asshole co-founder at Amada, like he wouldn't do that. And it wasn't even like, he's like, I am not going to do that. It's just like, he didn't. It's like, um, you know, the equivalent of like not making your bed in some sense. It's like, oh yeah, well, no, I just didn't, didn't occur to me that that was something I should do. And he said, well, I think you should make your bed. And then it still doesn't get made. And so it's, I'm, I'm at the level of bewildered that it, it, may, it may be my instinct different because like if anyone, you know, anyone shares anything, it's like, I'm all over. That, that's my first like impulse. Like I want, well, I mean, you know, at some level it makes me feel good. And another level, I, I, I think it makes you feel good because I think it's going to make the other person feel good. And um, I don't know how to instill those kinds of sensibilities in people. Um, especially when, you know, what we're doing is like, we're not telling people to go uh, worship the devil or something. It's not like, it's not like uh, on its face, a bad thing. It's like good, beautiful thing. People are creating stuff. Look at this, this is amazing. Yeah. I'm still I, in a I, bewildered phase. Totally. I, I mean, wh one thing I would say is that um, while people can be very creative, it's not um, universal across the board that they're, they're able to imagine all of the things that creativity entails. And so um, sometimes it's actually hard for them to see what their share would look like, to imagine what it would be to do to share. And so giving folks a hand by making something that tells them that they can or what that would look like uh, can help bridge that gap. You know, the, the clearer uh, a call to action on uh, a popular website like apple.com is the absolute, like, more likelihood it, it gets followed and uh, and used. Uh, so the the better the the formation of the sort of recommended or suggested action, um, so that people can both do it easily, but also imagine doing it more easily. Uh, I think uh, the, the the more likely that it'll happen, and uh, that can I think even uh, trap veterans of sort of other capital C creative processes because if they're not as fluent i guess and i think that speaks to what aaron was saying about um, instagram and his paid generation like that's just fluent you know it's not that they're they would be better industrial designers than nick foster it's just that they they they, they know how to re respond to to have the, the share reflex and, and it kind of hasn't grown it so yeah like making it easier um both in terms of imagination and also to be able to anticipate the consequences of it uh, i think will help a lot there was a weird thing that happened uh last i don't know a week or so ago where um i don't, I don't know if i mentioned that I mean, maybe i just mentioned this then but there was someone someone in the discord this chris from uh new zealand had a really good newsletter got in my inbox and I was like, man, this is really good. This is a nice short little essay. And I just wrote him and I was like, hey man, that was awesome. Um, why don't you share it in the Discord? And then he asked me if I would share. And I was like, why the fuck would I share your work? You did it. He's like, well, I don't want to come across as crass. And I was like, it's, it's not, and I, I get the sensibility, but it's like, dude, it's not crass. If you can't feel like the beautiful value in your work. It's like, I get 12 crass emails a day from people who just guess that I might want their shitty service you know, clean water delivery to my office. It's like, you don't even know who I am. That's crass. And so like that recalibration, like people might have a sense like, well, I don't want to come across as like a crass salesman pushing someone else's essay, but it's not. <laughs> so I think it's a thing of like trying to figure out like, you're not, this isn't a, if we could do what the pump and dump get people do to, uh, to push NFTs or some shitty stock, but we're not doing it because we're shitty people trying to pump and dump and rip people off. We're actually circulating really meaningful, valuable things. I think getting that in people's heads. And that's why part of me was like, I need to have this call, like a call in the hyper collab thing and basically like preach the, sherm the sermon and tell people like, get the fuck off your ass. Like we're trying to build something here. You say you want to be a part of it. This is the work. I wonder if it's its own design fiction, like the, 
you know, if, if this is not the grind set where you're always hyping yourself up, you know, there's some other kind of like spreadable media format that, you know, is <clears throat> built to built to circulate through all kinds of networks, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever else, but, you know, a set of principles or, or, um, yeah, I mean, I, I like Brandel's point about just sort of like the, the literacy needed to do it. And so like, it's, it could be its own project. We could make a t-shirt with like a, a digital display front that's connected to discord and anything that's posted in that channel just gets put on the t-shirt. So you just go about <laughs> your business, just let the t-shirt do the work. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking, Julian, about what you're saying about the sort of the, the link between being committed to design fiction and uh, speculative futures and, and, and various things and sort of fractional, en fractional engagement toward sort of productive contribution. And um, I guess it, I, I, when you put it like that, I agree. Uh, I didn't see it that way. So, uh, Probably others wouldn't either. That that if you can't be involved as to come up with a chore code, then you can help the idea of these things and keep yourself more involved with it by sharing and being a supporter of it on social media. It's not costing you or anyone else any money. Nobody's asking for any money, but it's it, it's it's uh, keeping the idea of design fiction out there in a way that is valuable to the to the concept and to the cause. So. Uh, a communication about that, linking those dots and showing that sort of path of escalation, uh, I think could could be pretty um, constructive for people to go, oh, this is good, actually. We yeah, need, I, I uh, second that. Oh, I was just going to say, we need a propaganda campaign with those little Julian illustrations. That it's like when you share the work, you ride with Julian, like that little thing and little the ghost of you in the car with Julian would be... A nice poster to make yeah i think we i think the call to action as you said brandel or propaganda dre you know like i think both of those terms are really you know because doing what you're talking about i had two meetings this past week that were sort of the the polar opposites i had a meeting with a friend of mine from mckinsey and then a meeting with a friend of mine who's a metaverse fashion researcher from rca so like they couldn't be more polar opposites um and i talked about nfl in both of those conversations and it reminded me how much how how unique this space is and both people asked if it was a consultancy the guy from mckinsey wanted it to be a consultancy so badly right he was like it's a consultancy right like you're monetizing this how's how are you commodifying this and i was like it's not a consultancy or it, it can turn into that, but it's not that it's not a McKinsey model. And he was just getting more and more frustrated, which just brought me all this joy. And then the guy from RCA was just wants to join, right? Because he is looking for a structure in his own life. Um, and, but I think, but what I did find myself lacking was some branding, which I think we've done a great, I, I, and maybe we're at this point now where I know, Future. I know NFL has branding already, but maybe we're at a point where we could um, benefit for some from updated language or propaganda or call to actions or whatnot. Because um, we've grown so much, and it feels like that needs to be looked at. At least I'm. Maybe I need some tutorial on that. At least um, because I feel like our space is so unique, and it's special and then it's like how do you get people to promote that even when they want to and i found myself lacking this past month on it so it's my i guess i'm i'm, I'm seconding the call to action propaganda maybe we need to revise our branding or update it yeah that's a that's a good point and maybe maybe one for that for that call um the hyper collaborative call call some of that stuff is some of the branding stuff is is a uh, sort of it's like on a slow kind of roll in um, uh, just you know as needed so it's not a, a super deliberate project because so like we needed um, some uh, a little thing for the spine of the the new of the paperback book 
And so there's, you know, there's a little bit of work there and I'd been kind of shape-shifting the existing logo, um, you know, almost like as a therapeutic exercise more than anything else. Like, cause I've been, I've been telling people when they ask, hey, how's it going in the near future lab for people who I've known about it for a long time. And I said like, oh, we're in our third evolution. Like, what does that mean? And then I just sort of tell a story that kind of keeps evolving as I think about what's going on now with the, you know, the, the, like you're saying, like, you know, like day by day, week by week, even as things develop, like a whole bunch of people, some of, some of the um, very deeply engaged students who I was talking to, uh, mostly graduate design students, when I was kind of preaching the near future laboratory sermon, um, they were, they were like, how, how can I be a part of that? Like this, almost this like, sense of desperation like you know like i need to be, I, I need this and um so you know thinking about the story of it and what it means as well as um i reached out to a, a friend in la who um to think about you know uh, he's a he's a he does typography and illustration that kind of stuff to think to, i just asked him just gave him a brief like can you think about how this might evolve and we had like an hour or so long coffee chat and He's just he was listening and kind of feeding back, and some of the stuff that he was telling me that he was thinking about, he hasn't I haven't seen anything yet, just really made my mind explode. And and the, the one thing in particular that stuck with me was that he was um, he was we were talking he was talking about like a like a molten uh, brand um, identity, so something that wasn't like okay this is it it's fixed do not change or alter it. And there was something so beautiful about that because first of all it was like uh, anti-fascist brand design. Like, oh, now it's, now it's a totally different um, illustrated font. Now it's actually moving. Oh, the colors have changed. And I was talking to a bunch of some of the um, uh, visual designers here in Detroit who I was hanging out with. And um, I got the sense from them, they were, they were like, yeah, this is the future of branding. And they pointed to a couple of little uh, uh, upstart kind of brands that better kind of play in that space. So anyway, it's a long way of saying, I think we need to, do exactly what you're saying, which is which is um, have another one of those hyper collaborative conversations, because that's where that that's where the expression that that I now refer to. Um, um, we make products in the future, like that came out of that those conversations that we were having back, you know, a couple of years ago, I think now probably when when we were saying like, oh, we should be a DAO. Um, we had like uh, these these calls for a while. Anyway, I'm going to have to board in a second, but um, I'll keep listening as long as I can. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful problem to have because it's like the it's like, how do you we've onboarded so many people who want to be involved in it. it the space is so unique. I gave I was giving a talk last week to grad students at SAIC and I mentioned the importance of like having community outside of grad school. We talked about NFL and, you know, they that this just doesn't exist, right? So I do think like one of the things I feel like Julian, when we when we were meeting in person back in like Los Feliz, I remember you saying like we're not going to be a consultancy in that traditional format and like suffocate it, which is also very rare because you know you look at all of these other even DAOs that go in that direction. So you know that's an awesome thing, and then yet we still need call to actions that exist in that molten or fluid state that can even in their own language have the ability to shift but it's like not i don't want to say hr because that sounds dirty but what is that onboarding because you still meet with people that come into the the lab but if there was like a i think dre you and i did we talk about this at one point like almost like a year ago or months ago about like graphics or videos of like illustrating education to people around, I think it was at the time NFTs, but like, if there's a way to talk about our values, I'm using all this language very loosely here, but like values of NFT or NFL um, in a fun, fluid way where people can get it and then feel inspired by it in a non-doctrine sort of doctrine way. I don't know. Yeah, I, I I think um, videos would do a, a, a like structure. I know is um, a thing that can go too far. Um, 
but there are sort of accommodating structures uh, that can help kind of um, frame what, uh, rather than structures, they're frames of <clears throat> what, you know, what it is that people can do and the ways that they can kind of think and act. And uh, uh, something that, that uh, the, the design sort of meetup group that we've had sort of fairly informally at Apple has leaned on. And I think um, it's been really helpful for a lot of the particularly more, more junior folks is, is breakout rooms and spaces um, that have allowed people to um, think about and sort of enact what they would contribute uh, so that they can imagine what it would be like to be one of the main voices in the room. And uh, those are, uh, I think, I think useful because um, it also, because the, there are a few senior people who sort of join, but there are a very, very large number of very junior people, you know, uh, it's actually open uh, to people who are in retail career experience and things like that. And there's only a handful of people who've been at Apple 10, 20 years and things like that. And so, uh, by by definition, any any given smaller space is going to have a lot more junior people, and they get to kind of practice and 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 riff on things with each other before sharing with the the big kids. Um, and so a a model like that could be useful for people to to pair uh, or to do matchmaking of some kind, so that people have the ability to see how they could sort of perform uh, not in a pejorative sense near future laboratoriness in a in a space where they don't know that it's going to everyone and, and doing everything um and uh have the opportunity to to kind of step through that uh at like a practice space um and that sort of uh structure um duplicated across things uh could help i mean th like the thing is like the space is non-threatening I, I i i'm not implying that it is it's just that there are a lot of very senior people julian you know you've been doing this for a long time there are a lot of really impressive talks out there and so simply existing in that kind of space can be pretty hard and stressful for people who uh don't have a, an incredibly high opinion of themselves, frankly. Um, so uh, yeah, like, uh, and thinking about the, the fellow from New Zealand uh, made me realize that, yeah, like New Zealanders are just so embarrassed for living um, in the first place <clears throat> that, that you know, having having a space where they can practice it first has been really helpful. Um, so yeah, I, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and I'd be interested in what other people think. I agree with that. I was thinking, we were talking about, um, South Korean students uh, in this talk yesterday that I had with my friend from the RCA and just the the cultural background of you know South Korea and whatnot um, very similar to <clears throat> that feeling of just sort of perpetual fear and embarrassment and not wanting to speak up and whatnot very different from New Zealand but very similar in the way that it sort of um, the output uh, has but I think, you know, I, I was thinking, I listened to this podcast yesterday about this fashion designer in the metaverse and because it's metaverse fashion week. Um, and, you know, her whole thing was just like, you know, fucking it up and experimenting. And I think we do that here, but yet there is a little bit of an intimidation in that because the people who are doing that are using really big words and they're in companies that are doing some really cool stuff or they've had art careers or branding careers or what you name it. And so there's there's a little bit of a barrier to entry just purely on intimidation factor. Um, and I think, you know, we wanna make sure, I wanna make sure that we're including a lot of younger people who are doing incredible stuff. Cause that podcast, this woman is 24 and she is leading metaverse fashion. I mean, she's badass. So age is irrelevant at this point, as we all know that. Um, I mean, I say that loosely, but Sorry, yeah. Can, can, I, can I say one thing? Yeah. I just want to say that, um, so I, I talked to uh, someone, someone who's part of the community and someone I've done projects with in the past, and they said, what, what we've created is so unique. She's like the other organizations or places that do stuff like what we do. She said, they're so inaccessible. 
And so she was really, I mean, I took, I took that to heart. I mean, it stuck with me so much over the, over the conversation. And I was very thankful. Yeah. I was like, I would be thankful to her, but also thankful. Like that is, that's what people are feeling. And um, to the, the other point about open, you know, about the, uh, you know, I guess like presenting it as an opportunity to evolve and develop one's practice. Um, and that's why I'm so eager to, to you know, do talks at, um, you know, at schools, essentially to, to this generation of uh, the next generation of people who are going to be, um, have to, you know, deal with some real hard problems that we're just, we're just feeling into. And so, um, and, you know, by the way, I'm, I'm just saying this just to, to maybe sort of underscore how passionate I'm about doing it, like coming to do this thing at Detroit is like a net loss, a significant net financial loss. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's worth it. It's like you have to get out there and you have to be talking to people and um, just really sharing the enthusiasm with them so that they, you know, they and, and, do, and do it earnestly and do and, and take the time to like go to dinner with them and, and hang out with them and listen to what they're saying. And like, yes, here's an invite. Have a bunch of stickers, you know, like be part of this. It's here, it's here for you, literally. Yeah, I wonder if our if our website and I, I'm just visually like right off the top of my head, I feel like we as a group of people, I love that we we push back against the McKinsey. Um, I'm just gonna say that term, but like that like style of indoctrination. And rather than like worrying about that let's call them, like, let's just accept the fact that what, what, what has been created is, is great. And there are a lot of people who want to be a part of it. Um, and how do we include as many people as we can? Um, hey, Camille. Um, and, you know, like what videos and content can we put out there and start generating to make sure that more people know what it is and get excited about it? Because that is, I would love to be able to, to send that link to people and be like, here's your little onboarding you know, uh, message, right? Like, here's what it is and just have them get pumped for it and what to expect, right? Like, if you want to be a part of it, here's what to expect in a good way. And, and also what you should be prepared to contribute. I think so it's not just a take, take, take kind of thing. Totally. So we're not that NFT, NYC NFT, where it's a bunch of tech bros. Can I ask sort of the the really basic question of just like what what the incentive is for for sharing about this? Like, I tend to design from like a make as few people happy as necessary type beat because uh, it you know encourages like good small scale solutions before trying to please everybody at once. Not that, not to say that that's what's happening here, but just sort of curious. Like, what I, obviously we want people to be thinking of in these ways because it's helpful. Um, but is there a more specific why? It's in the next book. <laughs> and if I wasn't sitting in a line at, at the airport, I would I would get into it. Um, but there is. There's a so what, and there's a why. All right. Which I, which I think we're we're. In, yeah. No, sorry. Go ahead, Julia. I... Yeah, sorry. Um, it's, it's just not a really good time to get into it, Aaron. But um, but but we will. But it, you know, it's out there, and I think it's just like um, below the surface of the work we're doing. Like, if you stopped and asked yourself, like, why am I doing? Like, why are you doing all the trip city stuff? And you really interrogated it. Maybe just quietly, you're just talking to people and not worried that you don't have an answer right away. Pretty soon, you'd get to the kernel of it, and it's 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 that kernel. It's like I'm trying to bring out bring about meaningful worldly change. Mm -hmm. And I just happen to be doing it this way. Like, you know, if, if uh, Aaron, if you were like a politician uh, with, uh, with a heart, <laughs> you would be acting, acting that way. If you were a lawyer with heart, you would be enacting it using those tools. You just happen to be who you are and you have a you know, kind of generalist sensibility. So you don't quite fit in any particular peg in order to accomplish these, these goals that you kind of really feel into. And so for me, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of that. But applied to change, like the world that we want to create in the future and that kind of stuff. It just happens to be situated in this really peculiar, eclectic, um, loose, you know, um, sort of vaguely defined practice that we're calling design fiction. Copy that. Yeah, makes sense to me. Yeah, the kernels are definitely. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why I've been a 
magazine maker, product designer, event organizer type, except that, it, yeah, I can't seem to get away from it. So, heard. Yeah, and you and you. We're losing you. You're getting you're getting that classic airport. Yeah, yeah well, the plane is taken off. Um, yes. Julian characterized. Um, he put he linked he linked to Design Fiction Daily last week on LinkedIn, and he sent something to the effect of Design Fiction, like being able to metabolize it. And I thought that was a really nice characterization of what design fiction is, as opposed to like a report that you would read and try to decipher this idea of metabolizing. It's like you're eating this thing. You've got to let it soak into your system. You've got to you've got to look at it and 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 take it apart and interpret it. And uh, I think it's a nice a nice way of looking at design fiction, but also the the where we are today with where design fiction is at it's it's starting to get more uh attention people are starting to discover that there's this thing called design fiction and the beauty of what it is is very action based it's really like design you know capital d design you've got to get in there and actually make some things and take some stabs at some futures, not in a predictive way, but in a, you know, what if way, uh, and not answer all the questions. Just put things in there that you might not even know the answer to. I'm just going to put this thing here. And uh, maybe you'll come up with some interesting answers. And maybe someone else will come up with some other interesting answers. But those collection of interesting answers leads to a more fleshed out understanding of what this future might actually be. Where do we want to go? Where we, do we not want to go? So I think there's there's that aspect of it. But because it's, it's brand new with uh, something like Design Fiction Daily, there's really not a lot of content out there. It's one of the reasons why I started it. Because if you look up Design Fiction, other than maybe like a Wikipedia entry and a couple of people talking about it that don't really know what they're talking about there's who unfortunately kind of like rank pretty high on google i feel like there's a collective effort where we can help pump that algorithm so that when people do look up for design fiction they're finding the real stuff and they're not finding the fake stuff right now there's a there's some fake stuff on the top the first page of google well i also even even <clears throat> even if like the the sort of canonical near future lab things uh, turn up, uh, TBD catalog and uh, and the you know the, the map of Geneva and things like that. Those are great, but they are exemplars of a certain level of polish and difficulty to reach. You know, so I think that broadening the space uh, of imaginable design fiction so that people, like I kind of keep getting back to, can imagine themselves participating in it mm -hmm. is incredibly beneficial. And so, <clears throat> you know. To your question, Aaron, of like what what is the function of broadening the scope of it is to to provide people with a, a, a wider set of exemplars of what the both the, the the artifacts and practice of design fiction are, such that they can um, imagine the steps that they would take to be able to participate on those terms, um, so that so that they have it available as a skill for themselves, uh, and we we see the results in the world. Um, yeah, like I, I think. There, like, I, I, I'm as guilty of this as, as probably not everybody here, but uh, but some people probably, of just like having um, way more kind of skill than activation imagination about what to what to put it to use for, um, and I'm kind of at times embarrassed by it because it's like, well, once I realize that this is something that I can just do, then I can just do it. But, uh, but I often don't. So um, I, I love those things to be able to help cross those activation energies. I'm the yeah. opposite. <laughs> my imagination is, what, is much broader than my skills. <laughs> and I think that's the that's the that's the bonus part. The hardest part of design fiction is the coming up with the idea. 
like I, I do some pretty highly polished design fiction examples and that's easy compared to coming up with the ideas. If I can't even, if I'm struggling to come up with a concept, there's no amount of polish that's going to make that concept any good. Uh, and, and, and it could be, uh, I think a napkin sketch of a design fiction concept is just as valid as uh, a, a perfect, uh, perfectly designed Photoshop file. Uh, they both do exactly the same thing. They spark the imagination. But um, yeah, and I think this goes back to the old, the, the whole imagine harder. I think that's really the, the core tenet of design fiction is just imagine harder about stuff. You don't need to have Photoshop skills or or three D skills or Mid Journey prompting skills. You can just come up with ideas. If you want to make a pencil sketch, that's cool. If you want to team up with somebody who's got high skill, low imagination, that's another way of doing it too. And there's tons of people who just have so much talent but no ideas to execute. And design fiction is a great a great way to create that. You know, the classic copywriter art director pairing. Yeah, I think that that's, um, I think for me, design fiction has been very helpful in terms of like making ideas tangible, uh, not just having them as ideas. I, I don't know. I guess I listen to this conversation. And it seems like we have people on either end of the spectrum of like, you know, how, how many skill points they have versus how many imagination points and how many imagination points versus skill points. And I think what is nice like listening to this is that like no matter where you are this kind of like practice and doing this is helpful um like for me it, it's it's really helpful like working on green pages it's like the best and, and something that julian and i have talked about um is that like i just you know whatever project you're working on you just like need to make something so that you can make it better and like, what's cool about this space is that I can make a couple ads that I'm like, I don't know about it, but I'll put them in the chat and then I'll get feedback and I can make them better um, from people that maybe or definitely have more skill and experience than me, but can help me bring what I'm imagining to life. Because I've always, you know, Dre, we talked for the first, like the first time we talked to her, like, well, if you just have an idea, it's just an idea. If you can't like, you know, you have to make it into something for to move it forward. Uh, and I think that's sort of the the fun part about this practice is that it uh, really encourages you and makes, for me, it made it like accessible to like make something real. Like, let's just make a graphic. Let's just sketch it on a paper napkin. Mm -hmm. Let's just start there and then see where it ends up. And then a lot of the stuff, you know, you know, we put out real products. Uh, and those products have a certain amount of polish. So like, I don't know, it's been fun for me to be in this group because it opens up those like first three steps that it's made me like more willing to like open that, open that up and like take those steps forward. Um, so in terms of like getting more people involved and like getting people like, you know, I'm a grad student, you know, right? Like getting people like that involved, like that's a really, I think that's a good thing to talk about. Um, I want to second that, Thomas, because I think like you are in grad school, right? Right now, still? Yeah, and Camille, you're in grad school and it's like, <laughs> um, and I feel like, and everyone's got jobs and working and it's like, it, you know, I, I keep thinking about like the, the making it fun is so important to like have it be to get people on boarded right like or the exclusivity right like i think about i got to go and look at mit media labs and like that exclusivity of going in there and checking stuff out was awesome but you know they didn't want me there right like that was like very clear they're like get the fuck out of here you know and i only got to go in because i awkwardly stared at the woman for 20 minutes until she was like all right fine come on in you know and so you know, but like we get to make, we get to be creative and experiment and playful. And I think if, I think fun has to be part of that, you know, that our value system, because otherwise we're not going to get people posting stuff. And like that podcast I listened to yesterday when she was talking about 
posting her fashion in you know her metaverse fashion she was like it's just fun like i'm having a good time and people like it and they resonate with it and i feel like you know nfl is a lot of fun when it even though we can bicker and argue about stuff like even those arguments are more fun than like being at mckinsey and arguing about spreadsheets and stuff like so i feel like we got to really hype that up of, of what it is fun so like someone like in grad school takes time to come to the you know so i agree with that thomas yeah and it's an interesting balance of like like this is fun but it also provides value and like dre you're talking about like the metabolizing ideas aspect of it like i was i got to revisit that shoot project that i was working on and like i've gotten a lot of well, I, got, I don't know. I hadn't like thought about it for a while. And then it was like, oh, wait, I like this. So now I need to make more objects that have to do with this world that I've, that like, you know, I've been able to create with people. And then the more I metabolize that feature and the more things I make for it, then then it becomes like a real thing. And that's like what's, I don't know how that like falls into like design fiction as a genre, but like, it is this thing where the more things we make, the realer these things become. And then there's like real tangible, not, I don't know, then the reality happens and these fictions become nonfiction. And I, I don't know, that's like a, I don't know how, what that has to do. That's something I've been thinking about lately. It's like, that's, a, that's something we kind of have the power to do. If yeah. The ideas well, make enough sense. I think design fiction begets more design fiction just to go back to the idea of, you know, I think done is better than perfect. I think making it and putting it out there is the important aspect. And again, napkin sketch is good enough. It's out there. Other people get to see it because the more people see it, the more people will comment on it. And some of those comments will improve the idea. And some of those comments will be invitations to, to maybe execute it better. Uh, and, and it can grow into something else. But when I'm doing design fiction, what I'm starting to really understand, because I'm, I'm trying to do a lot, trying to do one every single day, and I, I start to fall into themes, like I start to see where stylistically, my design fiction will look different than someone else's design fiction, because I'm starting to build these weird little worlds in a small detail that I think of one element of design fiction. I might not explore it completely. It's just a hint of something. And down the line, I might decide to expand on that a little bit more. So in a way, I'm creating a, my own design fiction universe. Like all these rules start to apply. And this really calcified, um, that process calcified in my mind when I worked on the magazine with Julian, because we would write an article about something and just offhandedly mention something uh, in the article. And then one of us might say, oh, I'm going to take that something and turn it into an ad. And then that ad ends up getting mentioned in another ad somewhere else. And this is just like a conversation that snowballed into, you know, one random thought being grown into multiple ads, a mention in an article, the new thing. Uh, you could see that uh, Julian does it with like a Augie Birnbaum, for instance, like that's a character that just re happen, recurs all the time. And I love it. It's, you can always count on that. And now I'm, I borrow that character and I throw it into my design fiction because I, I, you know, so I need a good name and nothing really beats that one. But um, yeah, it's fun and it's exciting to see how how you can build your own little universe. And right now I'm writing a design fiction on, on, I like to do this thing called design fiction in the act where I, I look at movies and I try to break down all the background scenes for the, that effectively is the design fiction. And um, you can see how like the world that you build bleeds off screen and how you're opening up the opportunity for more stories to be told around this, you know, little universe that you've created. Not in a Marvel type of way, but like in a probably more thoughtful and deliberate and constructive kind of way. Mm -hmm. So Dre, I'm just listening to your your process there. Um, seems like you said one a couple of things that caught my attention right away was uh, 
the first was creating design fiction every day. And then also uh, when you referenced Julian about linking them together, do you find, do you find that like, uh, isn't it, well, I guess important is not the right word, but, but when you're making all these mini design fictions, then you can link them together. Does that bring you satisfaction in a sense? Is that, you know, is that like a part of the process that you think is, I don't know, getting, getting, getting to the next level, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, because what it does is it makes me think more about this world that I'm creating or this specific timeline. I like to refer to them as timelines in there's, I have my prime line and then there are timelines that I explore and I make a caveat on my sub stack saying that like, I'm by no means predicting anything, but if you follow the many worlds theory that I'm getting everything right. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, the, there are certain worlds where I imagine like, oh, this is the standard. This is what happens. This is in, like the one thing that happened in the magazine is we, we talked about, uh, uh, I don't know, we're talking about payment rails or something and talking about Robux, like Roblox currency becoming so huge that they maybe overtake Visa and MasterCard. So we took that classic Visa MasterCard accepted and we just added Robux. And that's all it was. It was just, it was just that in the corner of an ad. And then it, it appeared somewhere else. And it's like, well, let's make this happen some more in this world. Robux is, uh, is, uh, is one of the dominant payment rails in the world. And, and when you think about it, it started as a joke, but then when you think about it and you imagine, well, there's an entire economy in Roblox. Like there are kids making games and there are kids making money. There are kids who are millionaires because of Roblox. And that's today. Now imagine in a future where kids, you know, not in the future, like today kids are also asking for like Roblox things in virtual things for Christmas, right? They're asking for Fortnite skin. So what happens when a digital property with digital currency becomes so sought after that kid's gonna start trading, you know, hey, I'll trade you my, 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 my Roblox thing for your bicycle. Okay, cool. And all of a sudden that's the beginning of currency and it snowballs into like, why would I use money when I've got so many Roblox and everything I want can be bought with Ro Robux now. Right. And, and this is this random world that just exploded in, in my head and in, in, in their heads. And uh, we decided, well, let's just carry this forward. Let's just mention Robux a few different places. I think in one of the articles we talk about like a monthly subscription, monthly subscription where you just pay with Robux and you can track your child with a bracelet or whatever product we were talking about there. But now that's bled into my design fiction daily because I like this idea so much because it's so provocative that um, that I I I start adding it to shop windows in the background. I'm, I'm tempted to just make a sticker, like a real sticker and just start using it as a, as graffiti design fiction graffiti that I can slap on, on real world business windows. Yeah. I think I jumped into the conversation, uh, like not right at nine, but a little after. And were you, were like you, uh, the design fiction daily is new. I haven't, I haven't gotten into it yet, but I've seen, see it. Can, can you just describe, um, uh, what the gist was again of, of how it's going? I, I think oh. I stepped in right when that was happening. Oh, oh, just talking about design fiction daily. Well, yeah. it was in December where I decided to, to, to make a, it was a medium started on medium and I moved everything okay. over to the sub stack by, by January. But um, I decided to, I had a bunch of design fiction that I had created for clients. And one of the NDAs that I was under um, uh, timed out. So I was able to actually pull some design fiction for, for uh, a grocery chain that I did like five years ago. So I just, it was basically a grocery flyer from the future. So there's like dozens of design. It's like a TBD catalog, but for groceries. So I've got dozens of individual design fictions. So you'll see all the early design fiction are all kind of like in the grocery food world. So I um, started posting them individually because I had this backlog that I could, I could set it and forget it. And then after a couple of weeks, I started to get close to the end of that set and I needed to start doing it on the daily. And that's just what I did. And and just when I thought I was, just when I thought I was um, running out of ideas and getting worried, like I don't know if I can do this on the daily, I, I just 
would read the news. That is first thing in the morning, read the news, and there's always something happening that sparks a new idea. Some ideas are are really, really good and potent, and some of them are are just kind of silly and dumb. And now I'm doing other things like I was doing the work kit Wednesday. So every Wednesday, I take the design fiction work kit and I dole out some prompts. And right now I really like playing with GPT-3 so or GPT-4. So I'm using that to um, to create a design fiction prompt uh, analyzer. So it comes up with design fiction, but then I end up kind of uh, uh, taking over and 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 fixing it up. So that's been a thing. And I'm also doing another thing called design fiction in the act where I f- pick a movie and uh, look at the background details and try to extract the design fiction and maybe ask some questions around it. And so those two, the work at Wednesday and the Monday, the, the movie Monday ones are, um, uh, I, I lock that under the paid subscription. So th- those go really deep dive. I get into the weeds. So I'll usually start the top off, kind of tease it out and get into paid. But yeah, that's bas- basically it. Those two things um, are, take a lot more time to do. Yeah. But yeah, ultimately just, it, it's just an everyday Right. Pick a thing, make it, sketch it out, design it, and then talk a little bit about it. And then I assume the character of the guy in the janky time machine. So oh. I always talk about the t- janky time machine and uh, it slowly kind of evolves over time. I'm not sure where it's going. All I know is that I'm doing everything high resolution. So I'm future proofing everything. I'm, I'm imagining there's a book in the making here. I think after a year of doing this, mm-hmm. I'll have enough enough to actually maybe write a book. I don't know what that book might be. Is it a fictional thing where it's just adventures of the janky time machine guy, or is it something a little bit more uh, educational, like how to, or is it something more inquisitive, like why, or what if? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, And there's, you're getting more and more participants, um, this prescription uh, subscription and stuff like that. Yeah, I just got another subscription come in just as <laughs> as, as I was talking. Yeah, oh. I've got, uh, it's pretty good. 10% of my subscribers are paid subscribers. So it's, my numbers are are surprisingly good right now. I didn't expect that at all. Yeah. Yeah, and that did that evolve into the conversation of, of outreach more, I guess, uh, through social and whatnot? That's sort of when I stepped in, I think. No, you know, it, it, that, it didn't evolve from that. That's something that Julian's also been thinking about, but Julian did did uh, pump my tires uh, in his last email with literally just a single line of, hey, Dre's doing this design fiction daily. Yeah, that's that's, it. That alone yeah, just, that. yeah, that that kind of blew it up. But uh, Julian's about to cool. launch his new work kit, uh, which looks really, really awesome. So uh, I'm going to have a chat with Julian uh, for his podcast, and I'm going to get a couple of his work kits and probably do a, a giveaway on my Design Fiction Daily blog. So we're going to do this like cross pollination because I think there's something really nice and healthy about this collaboration of like he's selling work kits, he's got a podcast, I've got a design fiction thing. I'm, uh, you know, I'm I'm right now I'm like the only blog. I'm the only person writing regularly about design fiction and Mm -hmm. acting on it. So it's a good place to be. It's like that first mover advantage. So uh, yeah, I want to uh, build up some hype and drive some people to, to buy the work kit uh, and also, um, you know, give away a couple and uh, create the illusion that this is a bigger deal than it actually is, but, or I not create the illusion. I want people to understand how big of a deal it is in my head and have them understand it the same way. Yeah. Have, have you thought about offering any kind of um, course, Dre? Uh, no, but I, the, I'm the i doing two, the Fire Festival of Design Fiction. Yes, I'm, I'm offering, I'm doing two talks on AI. And um, I, I realized that as I was, preparing the talks and talking about it, a lot of my thinking a lot of a lot of my thinking around artificial intelligence and and mid journey and chat gpt and all that kind of stuff is uh formed from some of the design fiction that i do design fiction is this, this meditative process where i just go in and think about stuff and i design stuff and perfect example is i you know i created this prompt engineering you know like o'reilly's style 
um, programming manual, reference manual on prompt engineering as a design fiction. And then I turned it, I created a, a second one down the line, which was like programming English, you know, O'Reilly's branded. And then I recently did another one that I called E++, which is basically the idea that English is going to become a programming language, thanks to this natural language uh, AI stuff that's going on right now. And that you can do, like, I'm literally writing if then else next statements in in a single one shot prompt where I can just do that, hit the go button. And it asks me a bunch of questions and analyze what I tells it, tell it and does a thing. So we're getting close to a world where that's a legitimate programming language. And a lot of that is formula. A lot of that was, was um, considered in design fiction. So I've changed my talks to be design fiction centric and talk about how I use design fiction to think of think of to to think and formulate my um perspective on future things such as ai and then i just deliver an ai talk that's uh that's based on that anyways i felt like i went i did a, no, the, a an infinity loop right there of conversation no that's helpful though i mean i, I guess the reason i ask is because like to julian's point about sort of like making this more not more accessible but making it more available um yeah you know, I'm just wondering about like, you know, what, what closes the gap and what increases the gap? Like random talks about the ways in which like we're from the future. He like pops into here and we're from the future. And like, are we, you know, is it, is it possible to get so far in the future that it becomes illegible? Not in the, not in the sense of like spreadsheets, you know, like, because it doesn't feel human, but more because, you know, somebody like you has like so many tools at your disposal that perhaps, you know, nobody else has, right. It's like a machine shop where you've made all of your own you know, tools only, only you can make these sorts of things. Yeah. And well, okay. So to give you, yeah. So like right now the workshop, the work at Wednesdays that I do are, are tutorials that mm -hmm. basically talk about how the design fiction sausage is made. And, you know, recently I've been using tools like, uh, well, obviously the work kit, but, um, but also um, uh, AI, uh, and then I even get into Illustrator and Photoshop and how I actually visually execute the the design fiction but the the yeah i think there's a bit of education i'm gonna try and pump that seo a little bit more and, and change some of the titles with words like tutorial because it's basically what i'm doing is a tutorial i'm just not using the the word to describe it but yeah i i think um design fiction in, in the sense of workshops is an important thing to do i i was using uh i use tabletop simulator which is a, a board game simulation tool for VR and PC. And uh, I started putting in prompt cards in that, uh, thinking that would be a good, a good way to do, to do workshops virtually is to get people in, in something like tabletop simulator. But yeah, education, I think there's a, definitely a design fiction 101 that would be talking about the benefits of design fiction and then maybe a, another one where it's like, how do you actually make stuff? Yeah, because I, I just think like getting those muscles working mm -hmm. is so key, right? Like, it, and, and you know, like you said, you sometimes struggle to come up with the idea or had in the past, like, you know, somebody say like me who comes in with all kinds of ideas, but is not sure how to like atomize those things into specific exercises. Um. Right. Like, I think I've probably written about any number of ideas in like the Trip City thread, but haven't necessarily gone as far as to be like, okay, I know how to like turn this into some kind of diegetic prototype. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this is what I really like about some like the, the like, I think of the skateboard thing. You know, you've talked about, um, about, uh, you know, like uh, height sensors on a skateboard, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had this discussion in the past. You know, it would be a really fun thing to do would be to find like a takeout container some kind of plastic thing spray painted a color um stick an led on it um hot glue it to the end of a skateboard and take a picture of it and talk about what it is and that's design fiction like that's a great thing it's it's like you can really do like arts and crafts you can you can make a thing that isn't functional that kind of looks real just take a picture of it and then just describe what it is. And that's, that's, a, that's enough. That's enough design fiction right there. That, that is, that is high fidelity enough because everyone's phone camera is awesome now. Right. Like I am a photographer 
yeah. and a writer. <laughs> so it's like, it, it's, it's mostly about just like learning how to take those, like those skills even, and just like mash them into, into what you're talking about. Right. Like mm-hmm. it, um, I would say like, you know, the sheep, uh, Jed sheep or like Julian's cars can be daunting, right? They're so high fidelity. Yeah. Um, it's like, Oh, well, how, like how good do you have to be? Make you don't something? Have to be, yeah. You don't have to be that good at all. It could be really, could be really rough around the edges. The, um, I, I'm still thinking of this, but I, I picked up a, a pack of Polaroid SX 70 film because I have a couple of Polaroid SX 70 cameras kicking around here. And I wanted to do that. I wanted to make a thing in real life, like hot glued sewn together, whatever it is. And, um, and just take a picture of it with a Polaroid, like just low fidelity, like it's evidence, right? It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be great. It can be, it can be just a snapshot that you took with a shitty camera because you have, that's happened to be what you had on you that day, because there was a cool sticker in the window that, that piqued your curiosity. So yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about the, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the fidelity. Frankly, I think lo-fi design fiction feels so much more uh, convincing. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, like thinking of the, like the lost dog posters and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and that exactly, that's it. You do the lost dog poster. I did a lost drone poster uh, and I did a Photoshop mock-up that's super clean and nice. And I, you know what, it would have been better had I printed it on my printer, went outside, stuck it to a pole and took a picture of it with a shitty camera. I think it would have been a better, a better post, but it was easier for me to just do it digitally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, those are great points. Um, I definitely get lost in the sauce sometimes with the idea of what polish means and something that isn't. Um, and uh, yeah, just to, I guess, find a place to execute sort of, sort of the important part. The, the thing that I would love to, to do is to figure out a manner in which <clears throat> artifacts and processes all across that continuum can be presented and presentable to people so that people know what next looks like and know how basic uh, and how humble first productive forays into the idea of design fiction can be. So you said cocktail napkins are good enough, uh, Dre. It would be cool to have a gallery of good enough cocktail napkins. It'd be kind of funny to make that as a as an NFL uh, product. It's like a cocktail napkin that's um, right. That's actually got like the necessary structure on it. Yeah, when you say gallery, how how would you imagine that presented? Is that is that cocktail napkins in real life or digital cocktail napkins or what what um i think it's digital i think sorry i think it's cocktail napkins in in real life or cocktail napkins or sketchbook entries um it it, it just a, a design fiction can just be can just be a, a scribble what what what's the idea for the design fiction and uh and use that as you know, that becomes the lo-fi, the low fidelity design fiction. It's the, it's the, uh, it's all idea and forget about the execution, just make room for nothing but idea. And uh, it can live like that, or it can be taken by someone and turned into uh, an execution. So you could sketch out the cereal box with all the little call outs and someone can, can, and you can choose to execute it or somebody else can grab it and execute it and turn it into something real or multiple people can interpret their versions of your, and now you've got multiple visual interpretations of your of your idea. But I like the idea of the the napkin sketches. It's like it's the it's the uh, um, it's the idea looking for a visual home. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it would be a really interesting um, actual physical artifact to be able to kind of display and treat uh, in a, in a in a certain way, so that people can kind of have it. You could even get them printed if you wanted, but mm. but just to, to just to imagine as a as an excellent thing, it's something that would be quite fun to just make make a space for in in, in VR. Um, <clears throat> but then the like the take your idea thing also made me think of um, in the same way that you know Lost Dog as a as an archetype has the little tickets and tags and and you know night classes and and saxophone whatever have the little tickets and tags like having design fiction that you then post up and uh, like the take one uh like tabs on the bottom as a kind of a motif for uh, inclusiveness and expansiveness uh to be like here's the design and now take it mm -hmm. uh is, is an interesting thing to play with in terms of what what um sort of recommendations and uh, and structure is implied for people to act on within the the system of design fiction so the idea of presenting a, a concept up to a point in the way that maybe you can and like to do Aaron uh that uh includes the that explicit invitation to to take it uh, would be really would really really fun to play with there's a there's a great album beck released an album a few years ago uh called uh, song reader and song reader was an album that was uh just sheet music so he didn't record the album he just wrote all this music created sheet music um and and uh and and it's all uh put together like a book like old timey sheet music, every song has its own album, uh, has, has its own cover art design uh, and you open it up and that's it. It's just staff and notes and time signatures and lyrics and melody lines. And um, that was his album. He put it out, didn't record anything. And over the coming months, artists started grabbing it. It was just YouTube, people on YouTube I one of the songs I, I gravitated to, I, I learned it on piano and ukulele. And um, it was really satisfying when I started seeing people post on YouTube their renditions. And there were things that we got, we did the same. And then I think there's a song reader album of popular artists that do their interpretations of these songs but Bex never performed I don't I don't know if he's performed I'm sure he's performed now but he never performed or recorded any of these songs so it was purely interpreted so I, I look at cocktail napkins and sketchbook notes as the sheet music of design fiction and let other people you know execute it differently in their own way I wonder too if there might be a useful sort of like um, regular digest from uh, from the NFL, which I mean that sounds like a job, frankly, yeah. you know. Yeah. But that 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 doesn't sound like free labor. Um, but you yeah. know, somebody who is sort of like you know compiling progress on the various projects and you know, There's, Julian does his dispatch email. Mm -hmm um and then there was also the intention of there's the um there's actually the 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 digest bot edgar bot i believe is who it is down down in the discord um so that you can vote up things that should be included in that there's also this week or this week from the future um Last there's the intentions the of trying yeah, if we're tr there's the intention to to um, compile stuff that we find on the Discord and try to automate this thing. Because you're right, it's not it's not uh, it's a lot of work to put this together. But one way to more easily put it together is to um, is to write some kind of a script that just scrapes what we do, scrapes our activity, and uh, compiles something. But uh, I'm pretty that, far towards doing that. I've been working oh, on that with Julian. Great stuff. And, yeah, I've been. I'm pretty far towards. Uh, I mean, I've got it to where it'll, it'll scrape it and and it'll dump it into a uh, 
XML for an RSS feed. Um, Amazing. Julian, uh, there's scope creep uh, when it comes with it. And uh, Julian wants the, uh, um, a certain uh, GPT for treatment uh, to go with it, right? You know, so it's not just the, uh, the links and, uh, you know, what we regurgitate, uh, but uh, it's uh, massaged in some way uh, by AI. Uh, which is which is lovely scope creep. I mean, That's great. Scope, some scope creep is uh, is desired and some isn't. Uh, you know, so but yeah, I've gotten it to where it'll it'll scrape the that particular feed the last week from the near future feed, and then it'll it'll dump it into a a, a RSS compliant uh, XML feed, and then um, I still have to uh, get it to where it uh, it posts automatically to. A, a public GitHub repo, which is, and then you can you can point your anybody can point their RSS uh, mm -hmm. reader to that uh, to that address. And so once um, once I figure out the uh, the GPT uh, massage medium is the massage work, uh, it should be it should be. Oh, that's awesome. But yeah, he wants it as an RSS feed. You know, it's just like a little key. Um, this is what is sort of coming through the, uh, you know, the sporadic hits, you know, whatever we in the community decide should go into it, you know, with the little uh, digest emoji. On the yeah, the, you can get the, yeah the RSS feed is a good, uh, I mean, once you have an RSS feed, you can pretty much make anything mm -hmm. out of that. You can build a little email maker from that yeah because i've got this little thing called Bi bibliobot i'm not sure if you're familiar with that so there's a project so so i i i got a um a python script running on a REPL somewhere that scrapes every link that's posted to the near future lab and puts it into a google spreadsheet got it. so it's a big there's a big old spreadsheet that you can go through with like link date person so on so forth but like that was you know like literally hired someone on fiverr to build to write this python script oh, and um gpt can do it for you don't think it would be yeah and well now i now G, yeah this is a couple of years ago that we did this but um yeah nowadays i can uh, that's what i'm planning on doing is learn how to make a discord bot out of uh oh sure yeah it'll be really easy for you um it's just no one not a and then it handed, handles the error messages, the inevitable error messages that you get. Um, mm -hmm. It handles those pretty elegantly too. Nice. Um, I did spend like literally 48 hours trying to get it to do. Um, what was I trying to get it to do? It was, uh, oh, I was trying to uh, do a web scrape of a, of a site and do NLP before it dumped into uh, an, uh, an Excel spreadsheet for me. And I just went back and forth with it, you know, periodically for about for a period of about forty eight hours, and then realized, okay, so this it's just not going to do this for you. It's just not, it's just not going to do it. And then a lot of times you got to just rethink your approach um, to uh, like your approach is wrong to what you want to do, and because it's AI, it's giving you what you ask for. You know, computers give you exactly what you ask for. If you ask ask it for junk, it's going to give you junk. Um, so don't be afraid to do that to scrap it off and try a different approach to it. And I think I'm, um, having it write functions is a lot easier if it's a big, if it's a long Python program, have it write different functions and then pull those into a different, uh, into a, a larger program uh, because it gets confused if it's a really complex program with a lot of functions. It's, yeah, uh, that's where I that's that that's where I don't have the the kung fu. I literally like my, the extent of my programming is I understand like if then else I can pseudo code, and then and then everything else like functions and I'm not I'm not and, an expert. I don't do any of that. Yeah, I understand like the structure and stuff like that, but like you can't I can't sit down and write Python. You know, wrote you know like a kind of like HTML or CSS or something like that. I can sit down and write code. Having to Google anything, um, you know, spending all my time on Stack Exchange, but essentially GPT four is my Stack Exchange now, so <laughs> mm. uh, much more helpful Stack Exchange. Do you have a visualization of what that summary looks like, Drew? Anywhere? Uh, I'd, I'd love to see it. 
I think I put it in the, uh, I don't know if I put the XML file. Um, I can put it in the, uh, the last week from the near, I was posting things in the last week from the near future. Okay, so we, we don't have like a, a user facing view, uh, like a, a point of view on the user facing oh, I, view I of the information yet? Oh, you I do? do, I have it, but let me, uh, uh, but it's very, very rudimentary. Um, that I didn't, just let me, let me dig that up for a second. Um, tangent in the midst of this, has anybody ever played around with NI, NAICS codes? They're like, um, industries, they're like codes for certain industries. And, uh, um, are you like, your yeah. ISO, like ISO codes? Um, they're, they're, that, um, they are what are used in United Nations sanctions. I believe. So, mm. um, so my dad uh, works for um, <clears throat> UNFAO uh, on North Korea and what is allowed into the country based on the sort of the breadth of sanctions. And so I think I've looked into it in, in the context of what which things are um, sort of incidentally captured by the sort of the multiple levels of resolution of it. That makes sense. Yep. Cool. I, I'm asking just because I'm emailing with uh, an innovation grant uh, person from the Rhode Island Commerce, and she's asked me what my NA NAICS codes are, and I'm sort of trying to do some like narrow, <laughs> narrow and wide boundary one. You know, of course, there's like sporting, athletic goods, manufacturing, children's vehicles, but then even saying like transportation equipment is a little bit wider boundary, or like mixed mode transit systems. You know, a little bit wider, mm -hmm. right? Like. Uh, even landscape architectural services, right? Like, but it's like it, thinking of the work that we're doing in here, you know, it sort of starts to feel as though that's part of what we do. So why not? Yeah, the mind can go in some pretty weird places as a result of real, it was sort of seeing the, the hierarchies that are kind of presented in, in NICS, NAICS uh, mm -hmm. code categories. It's like, you think that's there? Okay. But I mean, presumably they have reasons. Mm -hmm. um, okay, also tangential while, while Drew's working on this. I'm curious to just know like how y'all tend to engage with the Discord in general. Like, do you, are there certain threads that you follow religiously and others that you can just like don't spend any time in? Um, I used to, I used to go, I used to complete everything. Whenever there was unread, I would go to, through every single channel, but this is, this is when it was uh, a lot smaller. Nowadays, I tend to, I prioritize the projects just peek in on the projects. I, I, I just don't go there as much as I want to. And then uh, once I go through the pro projects, I'll, I'll look at the other one, like the front deck in the future, and I'll take a look at what's going on in there. But every once in a while, I try to go inbox zero on this. And, uh, and if I find I've got a good chunk of time, I can, I can log in and just try to catch up with everything. But uh, yeah, it's, it's hard for me these days because I've only got a little bit of time every day to spend poking around the Discord. Mm -hmm. I always check uh, the events. That's the other thing. Just make sure I'm not missing an event that's happening or a meeting. So I don't think I, um, <clears throat> I send a link uh, uh, an app mentioned to you. Randall, of the oh, thank you, thank is, you. where the code is. I didn't post it to the public site that I had set up um, other than to just have it uh, test, to have it do the validation test and then, cool, and then cool. took it down. But uh, um, yeah. yeah, very rudimentary, very basic. 
Awesome. No, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look through that thread. Yeah, perfect concept. Um, for me, as for me, I, um, uh, I am uh, very, very heavily invested in the idea of virtual and augmented reality and, and so by turns, the, what people think they mean by things like the metaverse. And so I, I, I look at those things very, um, very, um, diligently and then, uh, look at the, the, the projects, uh, or whatever, um, whenever people ping me, uh, and uh, and if there is a particular thing that I um, feel like I want to share, then I'll um, read back through the thing that makes the most sense to share it in uh, before posting it uh, to make sure that it seems plausibly relevant to folks. Um, but I, yeah, I haven't, I haven't spent a ton of time in it because I... Um, don't make a lot of stuff <laughs> at the moment for public consumption. Um, hopefully one day that will change. Nice. Yeah, it's like I, I've been sort of, you know, wondering where everyone hangs out. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I'll just, I mean, I, I kind of spend a fair bit of, I mean, I look at Discord, I kind of have like one of those uh, relationships with it where I, I consume a lot of information and then sometimes I try and back off a bit. Um, but I kind of, I think, I think it was a conversation with Julian. He's because I think the, the NFL one's pretty, you know, there's a lot of information there, you know, and more and more. And to Dre's point, it's like the beginning, I'm used to like try and read through a lot of things, but then I don't, I don't take that approach anymore. And then I think Julian pointed out one day, it's just like, it's kind of like, well, he might just be speaking to me specifically because he knows me, but it's kind of like, you know, it's like going to a magazine stand and just kind of browsing. And um, so I do that a bit. Uh, I keep that in mind. And then um, as far as like, you know, knowing, know, I, I guess I go to now hear this for like the most current, you know, group stuff here in this Discord. And, you know, I, I you know, my, my discords are like maxed out and I don't look at most of them, <laughs> but, I, but I, uh, spend time, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm in a bunch of them. Um, the one I really started with the most was one called pizza Dow. It was just a dollar joint when I kind of got more heavily involved with discord sort of around the NFT community stuff probably in 2020. So, um, but this one was going, I think then, and it was started, started there. And then, you know, Julian put the channel in for the Androids sheet project. So uh, there's not a ton of stuff in there, but you know, that I'll, I'll, look, I'll look at that and I'll browse the other ones. But I can't say that I um, fully dive into all of them. I mean, for example, I think it was like Drew, Drew, I caught like a chat to, and sometimes I turn on notifications, sometimes I don't, just depends if I want to be that distracted. So that's another approach is to, um, you know, get those settings to a point where it makes sense for you. Um, but like I caught, like, I think it was Will and Drew were yapping about um, some producing some code a couple of days ago and um, chat GGP, GP4 about, and um, it was nice to see that and just kind of like tune in for a minute, even though it's not really my realm, I'm not like, code guy like that but um but you know it was it was just that was sort of on a whim and I, I was glad I had a moment to kind of tune in and then read through it a bit so anyways that's sort of my experience with with how I deal with this word and of course Drew is everywhere all at once somehow <laughs> yeah yeah some people are built that way I yeah, I find that, you know, I, I tend to monitor, um, I mean, I, I think I, I do probably more posting than reading. Like, I think I, I, you know, I run across things that make sense for like the GPT stuff. So I'll post them in the general seminar thread. I think I see like archetypes I'll post in the everyday archetype. Um, 
every once in a while I'll check in on the solar punk, but it's, you know, it, I'm sort of using like the trip city thread as almost like a journal, um, you know, with some very, very smart people, perhaps, you know, stopping by to, to browse it every once in a while. Um, I have, I, I have no idea what it's like to be a, a reader of, of that thread. Um, and I sort of, I sort of wonder, you know, if, if other people who sort of are hosting their own threads, you know, like feel similarly, like, you know, Jed, do you, like, do you feel like you have, um, like an interest, like burgeoning relationships with people who are like hanging out in your, in your sheep thread? Oh, um, I, the only person that, and it was more, not because of the thread, it was just sort of, sort of like this talk one week, um, I mean, not, not really, uh, but, but I mean, Philip, Philip, I think it's Philip, that's his name, right? Um, he, um, uh, you know, we had a nice chat maybe two weeks ago. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he, he posted something that he made with um, chat to PT, a conversation. And that, that was kind of all about kind of cheap world building, I guess I would say. Um, and so that he, he posted it there and it tuned in there, but, um, I don't know. I guess the, the sheep one started with sort of a back channel where there's it was just sort of started basically from um, some mid journey conversations, and um, I, I I don't know. I don't I don't I don't I, I'm not really actively um, posting in there on a regular basis. I guess at this stage, um, but that's just the moment. Um, but it would be nice to continue doing 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 more with the channel. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but you know, if you look at it, there's not a that channel's probably, I would assume it's, it has, you know, a lot less content than, it's a newer one and um, there isn't that much there, um, I think. Um, um, I could post more, I never really know, like, uh, I probably just, I, I probably like overthink it and I just, um, like, do I wanna fill it up with images? Cause it's kind of, kind of where I've been at lately. It's just, uh, I've been kind of deep in the mid journey hole with V5 uh, mm -hmm. the past week or so. And um, uh, Dre, Dre might have caught wind of some random back channel images, but I was like, I don't want to. I, I was like, I don't know if this is ready for this level of interface in the front. It's mainly, it's mainly because some, sometimes I'm like, uh, if I'm being honest about it, sort of like my thinking goes to the point of, um, do I want to talk with someone about this or am I just too deep in the, in the rabbit hole to like deal and, and then I won't, it's like, you know, so it's, a, you know, I'm just, uh, I take it as it comes. I probably could, I probably could do a little bit more there as far as building relationships. Um, but yeah, and it was, yeah, that's just how this has to be fun, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would, uh, that, that's totally uh, reasonable, Jed, in terms of where you are and what the way that you want to work. Uh, although I would say I really love that you are um, feeling like and treating uh, Trip City as your uh, journal for that process, Aaron. I, I think that would be really cool to be able to follow, and it makes me want to think about what I would what I would journal as a as a as a project that I can think about and talk about and, and the ways to be able to kind of create renderable artifacts. One tension that exists between what a discord effectively turns into, which is an indel indelible sort of temporally specific um, chain of things, um, is the, the tension between what it is that you do to develop an idea and uh, the best way for people to be able to get up to speed on what the idea developed is, and, you know, um, a couple of uh, project channels have a pinned note to a um, <clears throat> to a mirror board, um, and that's pretty cool. That that means that there is a there is a sort of a simultaneous artifact that uh, lets people kind of look at things. It also means that they can modify them uh, such that if the thinking pivots, then it can be reflected. Uh, but it, uh, yeah, it, uh, I'm not sure what other representations people have jed is there anything other than like so it looks like do you have a you have a sketch file right like you, you, uh, where, where... yeah i i primarily just work in a um 
I don't. I, I dump most of the thinking in in a Figma doc. Uh, that's just kind of like the plat, the the tool I'm familiar with. Uh, cool, most, cool. Most mm -hmm. and um, um, yeah. I certainly, I've, I've certainly, I could put, I could pin it, and then that's like the meat of meat of yeah, it. Yeah, like I, I, yeah. I mean, if you're comfortable, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, uh, to to. Uh, try to escalate uh, sort of uh, public involvement working with the garage door up more than more than you're comfortable but I'm just I'm, I'm curious about generally speaking like what are the primary artifacts that people have whether they want to share them or not uh, mm -hmm. and what what sort of implications that might have for the way that we we do propose or suggest uh, people kind of present the the nature of their work uh, Drew do you like so you you you've made some of these uh, uh, Figma and Miro things. Are there other like what? What are the forms that you work in, like, um, in order to, to to make these things happen? Um, it depends on the stage <laughs> that I'm that I'm working on. Uh, during brainstorming stages, I typically will have some kind of a mind map or something, and uh, you know collaborative or otherwise, I mean, I'm afflicted with working, uh, I work out loud a lot, right? You know, so I, you know, instead of a, a journal, it's more just, you're looking at my, uh, my workbench when you, mm -hmm. when you're looking at my, the projects that I, that I work on, right? You're looking at all the screwdrivers and the bolts and the uh, metal scraps and everything that's, that's, that's laying around in the shop. Um, so I, I, but I do try to pull back on some, like I have my own, like all the signals and everything that I pull, I don't post all of those. So I do curate uh, some of those, uh, but I've got a few threads in the, uh, the fashion uh, project where I try to break it out. And I didn't realize that threads go away if you don't interact with them um, after seven days or something like that. Uh, Julian uh, taught me that, uh, but, uh, like I'll do, I have one for wireframes where I'm just doing um, like hand sketches and taking pictures of hand sketches of page layouts, uh, you know, that I that I think of as I'm going through there. And then I've got one uh, that Julian started that's, uh, you know, mid-journey journey images, you know, the, you know, the clogging of the, uh, the, uh, the time machine server with <laughs> mid-journey images that I'm creating. And then I've got another one that I started in world building trying to compartmentalize and organize because I'm you know I'm a librarian so that's kind of what I what I what I do right but also trying not to overwhelm because I also design intranets and design these these sorts of uh, experiences also trying to not overwhelm people with uh, too many different threads or too you know it's, you got to have a, a balance where it goes to that so that that's sort of how I'm using uh, really the the fashion magazine thread is the first one I'm I'm really show running. I'm I'm uh, the uh, the last week in the near future. I'm I just jumped in and uh, uh, Julian just asked you know if I'd be interested in, in kind of monkeying around and making it happen. Um, and I love wicked problems, so I just started monkeying with the code and, and started to 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 push a little bit further in that one. So that one I haven't made any threads or anything, and you know I'm just kind of posting um, as I. But then I also have. Like I'll post like screenshots of of code and like the artifact or something. It's like I've gotten to this point, you know, or I've gotten here and this is working. And then started posting the actual code and things like that. Uh, so I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling. Did I answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm yes. sorry. I wasn't. <clears throat> I wasn't um, looking down out of uh, the disinterest. I was looking okay. down out of uh, deep thought. <laughs> um, yeah. No, that's, that's really that's really interesting because so so. Um, if, if it's not obvious, what I'm thinking about is what are the surfaces on which, you know, the, the, the artifacts and practice of design fiction are visible and how are, is, are those um, distinct based on the projects and the personalities of people involved? What are the recommendations and, you know, for one of a better sort of frame of reference like templates that people can be given to follow to understand what are ways that people can kind of see and be, um, drawn into or, or escalate their engagement with things such that they 
they can see stuff they they know what it is and they and they know the ways that they can do things um because you know like as as a again hopefully i've made clear like i don't think that anybody involved in near future laboratory and making things um is in the business of intimidating you know like trace uh, from advertising some people are in the business of intimidating and being assholes and scaring juniors and stuff like that i don't think anybody here is but i also believe that it's inevitable that a lot of people would be scared simply because of the world that we live in and so offering alternatives and and routes into being able to parse stuff is really helpful i think um i personally kind of find it's really hard to read discord actually so um <clears throat> you know all, all of these different alternatives and, and ways that 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 the the content notionally that is kind of structured and, and and presented in discord can can also live such that people can 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 know what it is that's going on what it means to them and what they can do about it and stuff um are, when are I have, really when interesting I have formal updates i'll do like a field agent report in the discord uh -huh. but i'll label it as such you know it's mm -hmm. like label it as an update or field agent report and then things cool. like filter through you know through there um and conversations will uh, happen. I mean, it's just the the nature of uh, asynchronous chat as a as a medium for uh, push and pull of knowledge. That's what's going to that's what's going to happen, right? So, so when things are kind of vetted out, then I'll demarcate that in some way. So, to, I mean, if you're looking for, I don't think any of us fit into a template. Uh, <laughs> But uh, if you're looking for some kind of template, I think that's helpful because then people mm -hmm. can kind of look for that. Maybe that's a thread that, you know, it's like, you know, field updates or something like that, uh, you know, where it's got the formal vetted updates. I, uh, in my life as a real boy, as a knowledge manager, I've got these, uh, this diagram that, that, that helps uh, my business partners of concentric circles of where uh, and different types of interactions like the smallest one is like one-on-one -on -one interactions like chat between you know like me and julian or something like in dms or something like that and then the bigger one is uh, asynchronous chat right where you're kind of working out loud and then the you know the next one is uh you have it you know on a platform that's being for that's being vetted which is i kind of see that for the uh the android stream of electric sheep right that's it that stage right you know it's going to be and we've got all this content and now it's going to get it vetted out into the final concentric circle or circle of knowledge hell uh that you know where it's the final vetted artifact that's pushed out right to to other people right so there's various degrees of push and pull of uh knowledge sharing you know throughout the concentric circles i'll send you my invoice question services <laughs> Yeah, you know, all of this sort of like information organization stuff, I think is, uh, especially for people, I, I'm going to continue to self-identify as somebody who's got more ideas than skills, even though I'm sure I'm plenty skilled, but, you know, being able to figure out, like, just you know, wh where all of the ideas, you know, exist in relationship to like a centralized sort of knowledge set um, to sort of like then understand like, okay, which one is worth pulling on, you know, like, because sometimes it's, you know, you need, you need to make a, a social media post sometimes you need to design a driveway you know sometimes it's a uh, you know you got you got to measure the length of a wheelbase or something or put a sensor on something right and like you know all of those are so different from one another it's like i think very difficult sometimes to like invite people into your worldview which i think is probably why i use the trip city thread in the way i do it just like i just feel like i'm surrounded by it like y'all are just very smart right so it just feels like a sort of a place other than just some sort of like echo chamber of my mind just put some thoughts down but I don't necessarily think I'm getting more organized. You know, I might just be getting like sharper. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's sort of like a, oh, so you want to design fiction? You have like an ecosystem of, of ideas that you're interested in, like map your ecosystem of ideas and then pick, pick which fictions feel like they're going to, you know, be most useful for you. Like which of your faint signals should you act on? Guys, I got to drop off. That was um, nice speaking with you today. Yeah, I got to. I'll yeah, yeah to likewise. The, the GLB, I'm not gonna do it, so. Yeah. All right. Let's go, 
Drew, if you have any books or anything on information uh, management, I would love to be very curious. Good question. Uh, yes, I have Betty. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, can, I can get that. you Thank some. You. Uh, I can get you some uh, some references to it. I can, cool. Uh, That'd be sweet. Chat. Hey, chat Drew. Management. Yeah. If you've got any design fiction pieces you'd like to. Uh, You'd like me to put on my my blog? I'm I'm looking for a bit of relief to <laughs> Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> to have something else, something else to post. Um, right on. So if you've got anything, let me anytime you, there's something that you're proud of or anything that you're like, hey, I'd love to to put this up there. Just let me know. I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm open to uh, to uh, putting some stuff okay. up there. Right on. That's a good idea, actually. Cool. Um, all right. Very good. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. I'll, talk I'll to get you. you that. I'll get you that prompt. Right. All right. That up now. Okay. Oh, great stuff. Okay. okay. See ya. Right. Cheers. Bye. Peace. Bye.